Hey guys, it's Dr. James Kent. Today I thought I would give you a small tour of my operating room, procedure room, my in-office operating room. You know, uh, I built this operating room a couple of years ago and the reason why I was just so sick and tired of going to the hospital uh, for minor surgical procedures and in this practice I really try to focus on minimally invasive surgery and I really try to focus on getting patients in the door and out without them getting a huge hospital or ambulatory surgery center bill and you know I really believe that most podiatry surgeries can be done easily in the office. I think it's cleaner, I think it's more sterile. You know, for me, I really don't mess with a lot of uh, MRSA. I really don't uh, do things, seeing patients that have Ebola or leprosy or, 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 or chronic conditions or uh, very serious conditions. But uh, I really look at my approach to doing foot surgeries a lot like dentists do. I really believe that uh, if uh, uh, the podiatrist would take more of a in-office approach, I, I really think that we would help our patients a lot more and I think we would decrease the cost for not only the patient but for the doctor as well. But uh, I've actually had patients that have come all the way from uh, South Texas to come here. I'm actually going to have a patient come from Colorado. Uh, from here, I've, I've got a patient from Utah that's going to come here in the next couple of weeks. And I think the reason why is because uh, we can do things here at a fraction of the cost of, of what a hospital or surgery center would be. So uh, you're going to see a lot more podiatrists in the future do this. And uh, I think a lot of podiatrists in the past, they wanted to come to the hospitals because they thought it was more prestigious. Uh, and if you, if you know anything about the field of podiatry, uh, uh, podiatrists in the 50s, 60s, and 70s, and even early 80s did a lot of their surgeries in the office and the reason why is because they simply couldn't get surgical privileges and if you look at a person like uh, me that has a three-year surgical residency there's there's no problem with me getting a uh, a position inside the hospital that's not the issue my issue is the the cost that that goes along uh, with having patients go to the hospital for surgeries. You have the anesthesia fee, you have the hospital fee, and you, you, you know, you, you're always having to have blood work done or chest x-rays and stuff that may not be necessary to have for a simple hammer toe procedure or a plantar fasciotomy or a small ganglion cyst removal. And that's the vast majority of the cases that I do. I do small, quick, in-office procedures that last anywhere from five to 15 minutes at the longest. So today I'm gonna do a simple a uh, little video that shows you what my in-office procedure room looks like. So we're just going to go around the room and I'll show you exactly what it what I'm doing. But the patients come into the room, they sit, I put on the tourniquet um, about 30 minutes to an hour preoperatively. I'll give them a little uh, a little uh, a morphine tablet for, for pain. You know, I'll, they'll send them to the pharmacy, they'll get that and then uh, they can either have like a little Xanax tablet or a Halcyon tablet or a little Valium tablet and I can give them a little nitrous oxide gas. I have a nitrous oxide certification and you know you can give them a little bit of gas for three or four minutes uh, and then after that take the gas off and pretty much the only thing they have in their body is uh, just a little bit of lidocaine plain. I don't, need, I don't even use epinephrine. So what we're going to do, we're going to show you this little room and uh, the patients, uh, very rarely do we have a complication. They walk in and they walk out. So what we're going to do, I'm going to show you this and I'm just going to go from, uh, from one part of the room to the other. So this is my clean room. that has got a door that you actually pop through here and I, have, I can wash my hands and, and put on my mask and go in here and put on my sterile gown. Uh, well, we've got a little table that we can use our prowl gun uh, there, or we can use our, uh, we've got uh, striker TPS units here. Uh, we've got OSADA drills. Uh, this is my uh, uh, cabinet that has mail stand covers. It has drapes. It has gloves. It has DuraPrep. It's got uh, tourniquets. Pretty much everything you would want in a uh, minor procedure room. But you, pretty much all these, uh, all these things have, are pre-sterilized. Uh, we actually have two autoclaves here, so we, we have that. Um, we also have our little mini C-arm, so that's actually a photograph of my foot in x-ray. And so if I need an in-office uh, 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 x-ray while I'm doing the procedure, I can do that. Uh, we also have uh, our uh, uh, lidocaine our alcohol prep or surgery prep and we've also got our instruments here and so we've got a full line of instruments everything you would ever want uh, 
as much or more than what the hospitals or surgery centers have. Uh, we've got a little nitrous oxide machine here so I can gas people up uh, for about two or three minutes. Very, very safe. Every dentist in America has it. Little heart monitor here. Uh, this is my little chair and if you look at this chair, we can actually raise you up and put you in any position you want. So uh, we have a, uh, a small barrier that you can put up and the patient doesn't even have to watch their surgical procedure. So uh, think of it as like a small dental surgery. And what I do, I put up a small little uh, a barrier so the patient can't watch. And I go in there, simple as can be, and they can actually watch TV. So we actually have a TV up here that the patient can actually, I can, I can turn the chair, they can actually watch TV and have their procedure done. Um, and so that's pretty simple. And then. Right here, we've got tourniquets, a double bladder tourniquet. We can put on a small tourniquet, tourniquet to the left foot or the right foot. Um, we have a small little cartery, hypericator here, which I very rarely use uh, with a little tourniquet, and I do minimally invasive surgery, so very rarely do I need that. I have a small little scope uh, here, a striker TPS unit. Uh, we also have our shockwave unit, um, and pretty much everything I would need. So uh, that's just the gist of uh, my small little procedure room, and I think you're going to see as healthcare goes along and as Medicare and Medicaid run out of money, I think you're going to see this happen a lot more in the future, simply because patients can't afford to come to an ambulatory surgery center or a hospital, and secondly, I don't think they want to because this is much more convenient, it's, it's safer, it's easier, you're not put under anesthesia, so you're really going to see a lot of this uh, increase as time goes on, and I truly believe in the bottom of my heart it's actually better and it's safer. So uh, I just thought I'd give you a little quick tour of this. We do, uh, I'm not a big surgery fan. I only do about two or three surgeries a week. I do them on Wednesday mornings. And uh, uh, for, for me, I really try to get patients out of here without doing a surgery. But if they do need a small procedure, it can easily be done here at East Texas Foot and Ankle Centers. Thanks guys for watching. Have a good day. Bye-bye.